In the early years of the Cold War, the fight was all about information. The Soviet Union and the United States, as well as several other countries, were consistently using spies, bugging buildings, microphones, as well as taking aerial imagery in order to get as much information as possible about their adversary. The United States created the U-2 reconnaissance aircraft, which could fly higher than any other aircraft and also higher than any other surface-to-air missile that the Soviet Union could produce at the time. And they used this to fly over the Soviet Union and the People's Republic of China to take photographs and collect as much imagery as possible. The Soviet Union, in response, built the SA-2 surface-to-air missile, which could fly as high, if not higher, than the U-2, and eventually it shot a U-2 down. With this, the United States, in response to that, began developing planes that could fly faster than missiles, including the SR-71 and the A-12. And it would take years before the Soviet Union could produce a MiG that was capable of chasing down an SR-71. The only logical step after the air was space, and in 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1. And within a month later, due to that success, they launched Sputnik 2, this time with a dog attached to it on a one-way trip. Laika, hero of the Soviet Union. The United States was quickly falling behind and began sending up their own satellites. And in 1960, they sent up the first spy satellite called Corona. On that satellite was a large panoramic camera. Now at the time, there wasn't technology suitable to take pictures, develop them in space, and then send them back down to a ground station on Earth. So in true fashion at the time, the film, located in the front end of the satellite, was jettisoned from the front of the satellite, re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, and at 60,000 feet deployed parachutes, which would come out at 45,000 feet. This bucket of film would then float from 45,000 feet down to 15,000 feet, but this being the Cold War and ideas just being insane, a plane was used to fly directly into the parachute and catch it using a hook. This was either a C-119 or a C-130. In the event that none of the aircraft could catch it, five helicopters were also on standby to retrieve it from the ocean or wherever it happened to land. The first time they tried this, the planes missed, and a helicopter was used to retrieve it from the ocean. The first Corona satellite bucket that was jettisoned off the satellite and recovered by the helicopter was actually the first thing ever recovered from space. Dozens of attempts afterwards resulted in successful catches, though. So what does that have to do with me standing out here on apparently random concrete slabs amongst a whole bunch of Seguro cactuses? Or cacti. Cacti? Cactuses? Cacti? This is one of 272 concrete Maltese crosses built into the desert around Casa Grande, Arizona in a 16 by 16 mile grid. They were maintained from 1959 to 1972, and their whole job was to be used to calibrate the cameras on the Corona satellites. As one satellite would go up, it would come over this area, it would take pictures of the Maltese crosses, and then on retrieval, Air Force analysts would look at the photography, and they would analyze how they could change the focal length of the camera to make it clearer. And they would use these Maltese crosses as a reference. At the time, one pixel equaled 40 feet. By 1968, one pixel was equivalent to six feet. So using these Maltese crosses and the beginning of the program would equate to about 1.5 pixels, and by the end was about 10 pixels across. From end to end, they're 60 feet wide, with the wide angle of each cross being about 16 feet and the skinny angle being about two and a half feet. Their center point is exactly a mile away from the other crosses in either direction until you get to the edge of the grid. Additionally, because they were 60 feet wide and exactly a mile apart from each other, they could also be used as a length reference in order to measure whatever they happen to be photographing. Nowadays, we take satellite imagery for granted. You can go on Google Maps right now and you can find these crosses all over. There's about 143 left that remain intact in some way, shape, or form. I gave up looking after about 102. Of all the ones I found using satellite imagery from Google Maps, they were all oriented north-south except for one, which was canted 45 degrees. The Corona satellites throughout their time took over 800,000 pictures, covering 500 million square miles. Anything from surface-to-air missile sites, intercontinental ballistic missile sites, air bases, sub-bases, 
and ports or any other infrastructure that might be useful in the war. If you'd like more information about the Corona Satellite Project or how they retrieve the buckets, you can follow the links below in the description. And if you enjoy this video, I'd appreciate it if you liked it, leave a comment or subscribe. And as always, until next time, get lost.